Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is the Questionable Garage and next to me is, it's something amazing. It is my 1985 Honda Accord limousine. You know, it goes on for a really long way. And um, well, it's a little rusty. And by a little rusty, I mean extraordinarily rusty. It's also broken, has no suspension because we're uh, doing a, a complete conversion of the entire suspension to that of a Jetta. But before we actually make it roll, I wanna do rust repair. You know, let's get this thing taken apart, figure out how on earth they put it together so we can then fix it again and hopefully do it in a way that is not going to result in every inch of uh, roof railing rusting away, the trunk structure rusting away, just, there, there's a lot of rust, a, a lot of rust. But yeah, we're, we're gonna cut all of it away and try to figure out just how they made an 85 Honda Accord stretch limousine. So I know how to cut apart my not rusty and uh, potentially drivable Honda to fix a rusty, not drivable Honda. That's a, it's a really smart decision that I'm doing. We make questionable choices here. Yeah, let's uh, grab you guys, bring you close, show you a couple things, and uh, then we're going to get started. Oh yeah, we're outside because we're grinding and cutting and it makes a lot of dust and I still have dust in my entire shop from uh, Roadblocks bodywork. So we do bodywork when it's nice outside and we do it outside so the dust isn't inside. All right, so now that we are reintroduced to Honda Rousey for another time, we are going to figure out exactly how did they build this thing so we can cut it apart and fix it. We do have our donor limo there and it's obviously it's a lot bigger right there, um, but we've got to start cutting this whole thing apart. And before we can start cutting it apart, we need to get the interior out of it. And since we need to pull the interior out of it, a lot of you are asking what it looked like. You didn't remember. Um, the front is completely torn apart with no firewall for the diesel swap, but the back is still fully together in its limo form. So let's go ahead and climb in here. Me, Hello, sir. sir. Oh, the privacy <laughs> window fell down. So normally that trim uh, helps cover the window. It's backrest. But this is the interior. It is way nicer than a Honda you should have for an interior. What do you think? Oh, you cuts. What? I don't know. It's just the name of a town I read in here. <laughs> uh, it's really nice in here. It's not very wide. It's taller than I would expect, but it's really nice. Well, it yeah. used to be. It's yeah. now very gross. We've got that water bottle was on the rally, so that's a couple years old. The TV. If, if you want the room, folds away there. You can very much tell this is real wood by the way it's peeling up over there. <laughs> that, that's just the staining. We have a wet bar. Oh, 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 this, oh, what is, oh God, Cheers. why is it greasy? Oh. Bottoms oh. up. Come oh, on. it's fuzzy in there. <laughs> <laughs> but we've got the radio over here, an actual ice chest. Uh, don't forget the TV. We literally just did the TV. <laughs> <laughs> There's the phone behind you, a sunroof that you do not want to use. Okay, I can't move that. All in all, like it's does not feel like a Honda Accord in here. Now it, you fit a little better than me. If, why, why do you think you don't fit? I mean, uh, uh, you know, you it's, only fill up the whole damn thing. And you know, this is a two-person seat. It's for a smaller person to sit next to me. And <laughs> our leg room, when we're both sitting here, though, that is a problem. What are you talking about? <laughs> I, I, that, that's. Um, there, stretch your yeah. legs, yeah. No, you know. there's no stretching. You, you <laughs> be careful moving. We're on dollies. <laughs> I just fell and start to roll. What so, you, what uh, is the car sitting on right now? A, a, a chassis dolly. Oh. Yeah, so it oh. will roll away. Okay. Uh, again, if you don't remember. Driver. Driver. <laughs> no, that's the phone. I actually f made the phone work. Uh oh. It's disconnected up there right now, but you can call the driver, and there is a privacy screen. Driver, I fancy Chick fil A. I was going to get some generic mustard, like generic Grey Poupon. I think, I think this is it. If you don't know, Robert from Aging Wheels. Robert was in town to help with a couple things. We we're going to work on some projects and work on some welding. So that way you can get ready to go back and work on Money your escape, yeah. the uh, crazy EV car. What did you think of the hotel I got for you while you're in town? Well, he listed this as an Airbnb, $200 a night. Uh, that's all it costs, you know, but there's no... Ba apologize for my voice. There's no bathroom or bed or shower or comfort or privacy. 
I gave it a one out of five stars in Airbnb. I gave the owner a scathing review. I'm getting kicked off now. Thanks a lot. All right, let's kind of start going. Now, there's obviously a tremendous amount of uh, Bondo just in flaking. I know Limbos tend to get a bad rap. You know, they're just thrown together. They put a bunch of lipstick on a pig to make it look like it's something nice. And, um, that's lipstick. That <laughs> so I'm picking this seam because that's roughly how wide the stock Honda is. And I believe we're finding join line one of the car. Here we go, right there. <laughs> um, coupled with half an inch of Bondo uh, to couple the two. Holy moly. You know, it's totally normal to chisel your Bondo off. I, I don't know why I'm laughing and like at all surprised. It's a Honda limo. I don't know why I'm expecting like an amazing build quality here. There are skilled metal workers that can craft amazing things with metal. And then I guess you can say there are skilled bondos, Bondo sculptors. Let's take a look at our roof rails. Yep. You know, traditionally, you want to make a filler panel and not an inch of Bondo. I just don't know which way to go with this. It's all just so spectacularly bad. Well, hey, they at least used all metal. There's some all metal filler. You know, that's a thing. Unprimered metal. Oh, let me grab something to cut that wire with. Also, I did let Robert out. He's not still in there. He did have to go home and take care of his poor puppies. All right, let's grab that real quick. All right, so body line, body line, pretend panel. How far do we go on the roof? Well, I can see a seam kind of here that's full of rust. Is this where we go? They make their own cap. The line comes up here. And this is the original. There might be another seam here. I'm trying to figure out how these two, where are the back? This is obviously gone. All right, this is not gonna chip very well, so we can just go straight to grinder, drill those rivets out, grinder in. Probably should have grabbed a smaller drill bit. Drill the rivet out where the car doesn't exist. That's a plus.
just lots and lots of dust. Actually, guys, we're going to play kitchen show. Because uh, I had already gotten this side done a little bit. So if we take a look here, one, this has got way, way less Bondo than the other side, which is kind of interesting. But here's your factory original Honda here. This is a big patch panel. This is another car that comes down, comes forward a couple inches and continues down. Just weld the gas door in. And then this entire wheel arch section, there's no metal work in that. That is just Bondo. So I think my next step, just because one, this window, I had the glass guys come out and they've already gotten this window cut loose for me. We'll get the glass out. We'll pull the trunk lid off. I actually cut the blended roof skin in. If we come in here and look, you can see factory roof here and then the roof rail starts. What's interesting too, this was Bondo. That has all metal. It's like two different people were building the car. I don't know. You can see where the skin is and I'm curious to cut this loose and get this lifted up and off and just see what we have going on kind of under if we can get away with that. And uh, once we go from there, we will pull the trunk, pull the glass and kind of pull all of the trims and cut this outer skin off, at least in this blended rear section and determine what we might be doing for patching. Um, what we can potentially get cut out of this to successfully in like the right way of bringing it over. So uh, a lot more grinding. There's a lot of cutting and grinding to come. All right, guys, what you missed? This had spot weld. <coughs> Wear dust masks when you're grinding. Um, spot welds every three inches or so all the way around. And then it had a flange back here in the sunroof. And we are about to uh, pull this off and see what we're dealing with. Oh, that's some thick metal. <coughs> That's reasonable, I guess, since it's the unibody structure now. All right, and here's the inside. And I honestly, I don't have any more clues. That's our headliner. That's the end of the stock headliner. What is going on in here? That's a support that they make. What is this section of roof from? Is this just another Honda's roof rails? So there's just a big hole in the roof right here that they didn't need to cut this section out. When they're combining the two Hondas, how are they doing this roof rail? Because this body line roughly follows to here. Oh no, am I gonna have to find another Honda for another roof rail? And why do they put a big hole in the roof? This was supposed to answer questions. All that's done is make more. Is this the length of another Honda's roof rail? It might be. So this is their own box structure from here to here. They have like their own doomahickey. Here, let me, let me bring you guys in. So what you can kind of see there is in that black section that you can see this hexagon structure through here. And then you can kind of come up into here. Come on, see the dark? You can see where it ends and the normal roof structure begins. So it makes me wonder if there's just some type of like universal limo structure that we can get. I'm not sure this metal seam doesn't make perfect sense. So what I'm looking at here is that boxes in here I don't quite see the metal seam here, but it may just be hidden really well for some reason. I mean, there's not much to this skin anymore. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and cut this so we can peel this up. Well, I've run out of cutting discs, so I get to dust off and run to the store and contemplate all of, all of the choices that have led me to this. Um, <laughs> we know a little bit more about how they're building 
the actual structure here. So this is a complex bin. There's another bracket welded in here. And then I'm still not sure what they're doing exactly for the roof rail. What that's telling me is we get to really take this whole thing apart. As in, we have to blow all the interior out. We'll pull all of this stuff out. We can kind of peel this up. And you can see this is original Honda structure here. And that's actually sound. The good news is like the unibody, the core important stuff is sound. The weird limo stuff that makes it a bigger unibody, it's sound. Uh, it's just the roof rails and the skins that are bad. We got a lot more cutting and grinding and tear down to do, which is not, you know, it's not a surprise. Maybe there was some optimism that, you know, like just poof, it'd be like, oh, this will be easy. But the good news is it's, it, it is fixable. Like this, this rotted section here, I can cut and build a new flange. I am 99% sure we're just gonna delete this sunroof. I didn't realize, so it just, it sits right there. That's it. And then the roof kind of flanges on it, but you can just grab it and, you know, it, that's good for quality. Um, also, it's less holes in the car, which I'm a big fan of. Maybe if, you know, it wasn't totally rotten all the way around, it would do a little better. But, uh, yeah, so, day one, cutting into my limo and questioning life. We're going to go get some more cutting materials and uh, probably some storage boxes because there's a lot of interior in here. If you don't remember, <laughs> there's a lot that all of this is going to have to come out because I'm guessing that I'll have to figure out how these windows pull. There's... There's a lot more deconstructing. We are gonna learn by the end of this. Uh, we're all gonna be experts on how to build Honda limos. Not sure that there ever needed to be one or 15 or however many actually did end up getting made. I could only ever find 15. Um, questionable. No, this, this might be stupid.
pick up the other camera. Well, um, I've been trying to do a lot less time lapse, but that whole last section of me cutting the car apart is going to be a lot of time lapse or uh, Dwayne just cutting the audio for uh, some music because it turns out when you use an air hammer to cut, it is incredibly loud. Um, no one needs to be having their eardrums blown out, but when you're just doing quick cut down to figure out what you've got hiding underneath, there's very few tools better than that air hammer or the cutting bit. And I have about an 80% plan on how we're gonna fix this car. Um, first, uh, let's turn around and start explaining what we found. So, first off, despite some really scary looking stuff, this is overall really good news back here. So, the main unibody structure, all of this stuff in here is intact and solid. Also, this entire deck lid area that's rotten you can actually see there is a seam for it, both top and bottom. And what that means for us is we can salvage it without too much of a nightmare and actually get a good structure back into the back of the car and uh, you know keep water from just pouring into everything. Then we cut this out, left some of our mounting points. We'll need to come through and actually clean this up a little bit better. And the rain's coming in. And I'm working outside on the limo because I don't want dust inside. Yay, we'll get wet. So we cut this out. Now, this section wasn't too terribly rusty, but the big reason I wanted to cut it out was actually to get up into here. I didn't know what we might find for rust in this upper, upper structure. This is just very minor surface rust. We'll be able to sand that, coat that. We'll be good to go. And then this is just a straight section to connect. This is one unibody, flat panel, the other unibody. Let's see, if we look through there, you can see the door striker, right? That's right here. So that's the door striker from the back half of the car. And then we have a door striker assembly here. So this whole structure lives right through here. Now, this is what I find really funny. To build a wheel well, that is literally just all Bondo and all metal to build this out, um, to give us wheel well structure. The thing that really is worrying to me is the fact that my roof rail is totally gone. You can see how they integrated everything in. They should have done some rust preventative on the structure they added. They didn't. Ah, that was a raindrop right in the air. Come on. So we'll scuff this. This is mostly good, but what we don't have anymore is a drip rail. The drip rail along the entire length of the car on both sides really is almost entirely gone. Here's a little bit of the factory section here. I need to come up with some kind of universal roof rail. And this is where you, hopefully someone there out there watching can help me. I've been doing some digging and I think my best bet is either to just completely custom bend something or I know there has to be some like universal uh, rain gutters that I can get in there and just kind of fabricate in and weld to uh, reconnect everything. It, limos are a thing. I, I'm assuming there's something. I know some people talk about using a Model A roof gutter. It's not quite long enough. Um, maybe I can go to pull apart and just cut a bunch of stuff up, but I could really use your input if you're aware of uh, some type of kind of universal roof rail. So we'll have to pull more of this apart and uh, get it installed there. Now, another plan for fixing back here. If we look, this is completely gone. All of this fine structure down to here is gone. And what I think I'm gonna do when it comes to patching, originally I was gonna cut that and just build all of it out here. But this is a flat panel, also with a quarter inch of Bondo. So obviously we have a little bit of flexibility in how we build things. And I actually am planning to come in on both sides just with a flat plate of steel down to here to fill this whole area in. I've got a flange here that I can clean up and weld to. And what that's gonna let me do is rather than losing this whole structure into a patch, I will be able to cut it out and rebuild this area of the car because it is rotten very badly. Someone, namely me, 
put a bunch of spray foam in it as a temporary measure. Uh, don't use spray foam for rust repair. Something else that's really kind of interesting is to see in there, let's zoom in so it'll adjust the light. <laughs> they, they just put steel. There's just random steel there. Kind of sort of welded in, sort of okay. Sort of not okay. Um, another thing we're doing, no more sunroof. I'm not gonna put the sunroof back in it, which is gonna simplify my roof structure a little bit in that I can get a couple more reinforcing ribs and we will just be running a long steel skin. Now the front section, we will be cutting off the donor car. We will cut along here and it'll go just down into the windshield area because that side's completely rotted out and we were a little rotted out here. So we'll cut and uh, move our roof structure for the front, nice long flat, fabricate in some sides and get some roof rails. That's the current plan. I feel pretty good. You know, the biggest issue again, and I really hope someone out there has an answer for me, is I have got to come up with a rain gutter, some, some type of metal that's pre-bent. If not, I'll find a place that can bend it out, but we're going to have to cut all of this up and then it tucks in flush against the body right here. You can kind of see the seam separated a little bit. They leaned it right up against it. Then it had the little bend, the little kicker on it to uh, accept the molding. And then this, the way they built it was just a little small panel and then the big flat panel. It's a mess. It is an absolute mess, but it's fixable, we can do this. It's, it's not getting it cut apart and then finding so much damage that you just have to give up. Uh, sometimes, sometimes that's the easy thing to do, but you know, seeing through to the end and honoring your commitments is, uh, well, that's a whole lot more important than uh, going with the easy route. So we are gonna continue on with Honda Rousey. I'm actually gonna be wrapping her up a little bit um, where we're gonna work on some of the other cars we've got going on because I need to find these roof rails. I really hope someone comments something that's gonna help me narrow it down so I get it ordered because uh, the next Rousey episode is going to be cutting apart the donor car and grafting in and doing a tremendous amount of metal work. Uh, so hopefully we can have it all sealed up and solid again. And from there, it's suspension, wiring, building the new engine, getting the new engine in. You know, it's, it's gonna be ready in no time at all. It's a lot of work, but you know, how many, how many opportunities do you have in life to work on a 1985 Honda Accord limousine? Don't know that you should, but I have a chance. So we're going for it. I appreciate you guys as always hanging out with us as we make progress on these long forgotten projects, things that have been hiding out, sitting around, waiting, uh, waiting for their turn um, and waiting to get unstuck from a storage unit. But we're gonna keep working, we're gonna keep grinding, keep making dust and uh, we're going to start winning along here at some point. So hope you guys have a great day. Enjoyed watching this episode. And if you've made it this far along and you're not subscribed, I'd greatly appreciate it if you went ahead and uh, hit that subscribe button. It helps us out a ton, especially with people finding us with the new name. But yeah, I'm Jared reminding you guys to always make questionable choices and uh, don't be afraid to do it. Worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to fail and uh, otherwise you don't get to ever say you even tried. We'll see you.